How yeah, are you? yeah. I'm good. I'm a, I'm a little tired. Like I said, I went to bed late this morning, so um, um, I'm going to go to bed on time tonight at a decent time. Good. I'm, I'm going to call something. you and make, you, make sure you actually do go to sleep on time. I will do. I will do. <laughs> I'll call you and I'll tell you okay. the story. Um, I'll listen to some music. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Okay, fantastic. Well, well, I'm going to say, you know, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are across the globe. I am actually in the UK and we're about sort of which part? I'm in London and this is Randy Charles and she's calling, she's all the way from Chappaqua, New York in Westchester County. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Looking, you know, across the waves. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Stacey, for joining us and also... Hi, IP Khan, is it Khan? Help me uh, no, pronounce it. Oh, it's Lisa. Yes. Hello, Lisa. Okay, brilliant. Well, I wanted to interview Randy because I, I met Randy, I think it was, was it last year or the year before, Randy? I think it's like two years, almost two years. We have an that's, anniversary coming up, Esther. That's kind of scary. That's kind of scary. Hi, but I we? met. <laughs> Hi guys. I met Randy two years ago. I was sort of hustling through New York and she took some pictures of me. And what I feel about Randy uh, is that she's got such a keen and sharp eye for detail, but also she captures the essence of everything. And, you know, I've, I felt that she, I believe that she's an incredibly gifted individual and I have the privilege of her also submitting stuff to my magazine. So it's a real pleasure to have met you. And in this current time as well, Randy, you're doing some, you're still doing some more fabulous, fabulous work in your community. But before I go any further, Randy, I'd like to ask you, who is Randy in a nutshell, in a crab shell or a peanut shell? Who is okay. Randy? To you me? know, I have some <laughs> of my friends on right now and they could probably tell you better than I can, but um, who am I? Um, that I ask myself that question every single day. Who am I? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm just a person trying to get by every day, um, trying to do good in the world. Um, and, um, I live through my art and through my family mm -hmm. and um, I guess that's really it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. I'm hard but it's interesting how myself. What's that? I know, I know you do, but this is about, for me, this is also about recognition as well, because you are incredibly gifted and talented. And, you know, like they say, you have footballers, you have footballers, you have artists, you have artists. Um, you know, there was something about Michelangelo. There was something about all these greats that stood them out from others. It doesn't mean that anybody else, it doesn't mean to devalue the gifts and skills that other people have or others have, but you know, you, for me, you stand out and you know, you're, you're very much about heart and soul. But like I said, when you look at something, you capture the essence of the soul and it could be a leaf, it could be a piece of paper. And that's what I see in you. And so, thank you, Esther. Thank you so much. You know, Behind the lens, though, when you're behind the lens, Randy, you know, where do you go? Because I know people have different ways of expression and, or expressing and feeling what they do. But where... <laughs> That's where I come. I go sideways. <laughs> Sorry. You go that. sideways. But, you know... Yeah. But what, so, where do you go? What does it do for you when you're behind the lens, um, Randy? You know, it's that's a really good question. I um, It's funny... I could be in the biggest funk and all I need to do is pick up my camera and mm -hmm. just start viewing the world through my camera. And I, I come alive. It just, it brings me an enormous amount of joy, whether it's photographing people, whether it's mm. landscapes, um, it could be animals, it could be anything. P people are really my, my passion, but um, there's just something about looking through that lens and seeing things in a different way than you normally would if you're just kind of walking around that changes mm -hmm. everything for me. And have you always been aware of this gift or is it something that you've sort of fallen into as you've got older and wiser? <laughs> Hopefully wiser. <laughs> um, I think, thank you for calling it a gift. Um, I think that I, it's something I definitely have cultivated with time. Um, mm -hmm. I never viewed myself as an artistic person and um, I think I finally have gotten to a place where I do view myself as an artist, which is a nice feeling. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. I, you know, for me, I always had a camera and I always took pictures, but it mm -hmm. became more of an art form later on in life. 
Mm. And what do you think created or caused that transition? And I think it was really interesting when you said that you didn't consider yourself as an artist before. So did you not define what you were doing? You know, it really wasn't until I, I learned the technical aspects of photography um, mm -hmm. and worked with a mentor. And then when I just kind of let loose with a camera, like I just went out mm -hmm. and just started taking pictures and taking more pictures and more pictures and taking classes. Mm -hmm. And I started to develop this sense of what I wanted to accomplish. And it just kind of mm -hmm. came to me. And yeah, so that's, it really came kind of organically uh, through the whole process. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. And you know, you've taken, like you said, your, your speciality um, are people. Can you share some of the more poignant moments of taking a picture of someone and the the experience it's done for them, the impression it's left on them? Um, so I think that one of the things that has brought me the greatest joy is photographing mm. people on the streets um, anywhere. Now, let's mm. use New York as an example, which is how you and I met. But, That's right. Um, yeah. I, I tend to mind my own business. <laughs> What's that? You were I was trying to mind my own business, and then yes. you just sort of came into my face. Yeah. <laughs> yes. How fortuitous was that meeting? It was for me. It really yeah. was. But um, the biggest thing for me is human connection. And mm -hmm. um, when I started photographing people that are kind of out of the box, which I find I'm, yeah. I have a huge attraction to people who are out of the box because I feel like those are the brave souls who are living mm. their true selves, rather than the people yeah, who are kind of absolutely. walking around, like me sometimes, just, mm. you know, dressed and being, and conforming to what society expects. Mm -hmm. And I find that the people who are allowing themselves to be out of the box have the most interesting stories. And some of the mm -hmm. stories are, are sad, some are beautiful, and um, I love photographing them and capturing their essence and their beauty, and then having them see it and getting emotional because they don't see themselves in that light. Yes. Yeah. It's interesting because as you were talking, the, the sort of, um, I would say vision that I got for a lot of these people who are outside of the, their box, it's an expression of something obviously. Yes. And so when you capture them, maybe for the first time in their life, someone's able to not only just capture them but you've acknowledged them you've acknowledged that uniqueness you've acknowledged that eccentricity about them whereas most times you know society will sort of push you in the corner or think that you're crazy or you know yes. really put your difference on it but you're you 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 embrace their difference you allow them to embrace and acknowledge their difference and that's really really great you should see i ordered some stripy socks last week i've got i'm going stripy i look like a bumblebee <laughs> I love your but sense that's, of style. I love it. That's what attracted me to you when I first met you. But that's, that's for me, I say that's something from the soul. That's, you know, I get up and I just want to be me now. I don't want to conform. I don't want to be put in a box. I don't want to be, you know, subdued in any type of way. And so you said something King there about your, about your work and expression. So now um, because we're in this current environment with this, environment that's what I'm going to say and everybody's on isolation and lockdown you're doing some really fabulous work capturing still capturing people's essence but also you're doing it for a particular cause can you share what that is Randy yes but first I I don't want to take credit for the idea um so it's the front steps okay. project and it was started by two fabulous women photographers mm -hmm. in Needham Massachusetts and um they decided to bring happiness to people who were, you know, self-quarantining and at the same time raise money for whatever charity they chose. And mm -hmm. um, so I read about it and people were sending me the articles about it and it, it piqued my interest. And I decided that um, my town needed the boost. I was hearing, mm -hmm. you know, horrible stories about the merchants in my town and the restaurants that have all had to close down uh, because they're being respectful and, and careful with human lives. And mm. um, I, these people I've known for, you know, since I moved into this town and we have a real sense of community in this area and they become okay. our friends. And I just wanted to do something to help them. So I decided that I was gonna do the Front Steps project and um, raise money to give to the merchants. So I started initially where people would like, uh, I'd carry a box around and put it on the lawn 
while I was mm. kept while I was keeping a, a good distance away with my telephoto lens. And I photographed families on their front steps, which for them, mm -hmm. it's a way to kind of remember this time, this period of time, which I don't know if any of us are really going to want to remember it, but it's something. And um, at the same time, they're making a donation. And I got to deliver some checks to some of the merchants and um, oh, no. just the emotion and the, the tears of joy that I got from some of them was just really incredible. And it makes me want to keep doing this. Mm. And how many more people do you, how many more families, or I would say people, because not just families that you're um, capturing, how many more do you think you, you would be able to get through? Well, so I, I think to date I have photographed probably about 50 families. And um, mm -hmm. I'm not, I haven't counted over the past few days, but I think I was up around $8,300 in donations. Oh, wow. So, um, the first round went to some merchants where the checks were written directly mm -hmm. to them. Now it's through a Go GoFundMe page and um, that's gonna, I'm not exactly sure when I'm gonna distribute that or how I'm gonna distribute it to the merchants, but mm -hmm. um, I have another 50 families to photograph with more people coming oh, okay. to me asking, you know, to sign up. I've kind of put new participants on pause because mm -hmm. I, I need to kind of catch up and catch my breath a little bit. It's become a mm -hmm. full-time job, which I'm happy to do. Mm -hmm. And I guess, just touching briefly on this current climate, um, I know you said that some, you know, people probably won't want to remember this, this time or this period. But if I would like to present this to you, I feel also that this time and period has been a time of um, unity in an interesting way for a lot of us. It's been a time of reflection. It's been a time of contemplation. And in this whole thing where it's looked as if we're all being forced to, to segregate it's also bringing us together in a much, I think, bigger and more powerful way. Can, what, what are your thoughts on that, Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with it to a certain degree. I think that there are families that are fortunate enough to be able to stay home. Some of them work from home, still receive paychecks. Um, and I think that there's been a lot of quality time that is spent you know, with the families. I think sometimes mm. it can be overwhelming for the oh, parents yeah. and, and probably for the kids too to have too much parent time. But um, I do, for the first time in years, I see parents outside playing with their kids, riding bikes, playing baseball on the front lawn, basketball. Mm -hmm. It almost reminds me of the way it was when I grew up before, you know, we had computers and too much television and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. on the flip okay. side, you have, you have the workers who yes, don't absolutely. have the benefit of like staying home and, and not receiving a paycheck. And, you know, everyone's saying that this is the great equalizer. Well, it, it really isn't. It's still all yeah. about, you know, class Absolutely. And, yeah. Absolutely. And also people's mental health and mental well-being. Because um, I've had a lot of people coming to me for different sessions. And it's, it's a little overwhelming because, you know, people are struggling as well with the whole concept of self-isolation. Um, but let's go back to your photography. Oh, there she goes again. Yep, I had to unplug because it was not, it was wobbling. Sorry, <laughs> that was my um, um that, that was me traveling. From I know I was sort of home. traveling with you. Yeah, we're both on this ship or something, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> and Randy, for you, where I mean, after this particular, after we come to some sort of closure around this particular situation, because there are many theories about what this is all about. Um, but after we after we come through. Do you feel that this situation and also what you're doing is going to make you a different, better person or how it, how would it, do you feel it would impact you as you come through? It's a really good question, Esther. Um, you know, I, I, it's, it's definitely impacting me greatly. And, um, mm. you know, as you know, my husband's a physician and while he's not working yeah. at one of the city hospitals, he is, you know, in his office and he's seeing COVID patients and, I'm watching his anxiety level, which, you yeah. know, um, really peaks midweek um, mm -hmm. because there's so much that you have to think about when you're trying to keep yourself safe from the virus yes. and keep other people safe. And, um, you know, it's, it's hit close to home. I know people who have had the virus and thank God so mm -hmm. far they've been okay. Um, my cousin, who I think just logged on a little while ago. Um, hi, Cindy. Hi, cousin. Um, she was just diagnosed mm -hmm. and um, hopefully she's going to be okay. But I think that, um, I don't know, I, I worry about what the new normal is going to be when we come out of this. 
and what it's going to be like, you know, going out in public and, and allowing ourselves to be close and intimate with people, you know, outside of our families. Mm. Like I want to be able to hug my friends and get close to people. And I'm hoping mm. that, you know, this anxiety wanes after a period of time and we can, you know, go back to the way things were to a certain degree. How about for you, Esther? Mm. I would love to hear your thoughts. Got to try and remember why I asked you in the first place. No. <laughs> <laughs> About how, this, uh, how you think this, uh, how this is impacting you and how you think it's going to impact you when, you know, when all this is done. Yes. Um, I don't know. I mean, there is a great level of uncertainty for a lot of people. For me, I'm sort of riding the waves. Um, I'm still busy building um, and, and doing what I need to do. And also, quite interestingly, my creative process has really expanded. You know, this creative thing is just bursting out of me. Um, I guess because of the work that I do, I, I have an awareness of, I don't want to get too technical, but there, there is an awareness of what this could be and what it's creating. But when we come through, I have no idea. So I guess for me, I'm just riding the waves. Yeah. And the only way that I'm preparing myself is through my health, making sure that I, I keep topped up with my health and well-being and mostly my mental um, well-being. I've got a granddaughter who keeps me on my toes. Um, <laughs> I've got a dog that and I've got a dog that sometimes gets on my nerves because he, he's like, he needs this permanent um, petting. But aside from that, I'm just really just maintaining a sense of being present to this moment and also yeah. listening to music because on the other side if I allowed myself to look at what could potentially be on the other side it could be pretty scary um because if yes. you think about it the, the whole world almost is on lockdown you know we our lives at this moment in time are in the hands of and that's a scary thing to think about is that making sense yes um yeah and so it's it, for me, it's almost like if if we can be put in this position on a global level, in this position that 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 reeks of fear, that that reeks of uncertainty, then you know we're literally puppets. But then within that, how do we continue to hold on to our own individual power and strength? Yeah, and that comes that comes through the things that you're doing, Randy. Reaching out to the community, there's a power in there that, as much as we, like I said, we are being trying to be divided, and there are people who will be experiencing that division much more than others. There's still a growing community of, you know, what we're not going to put up with this with this anymore. We're going to come together, and I do believe that we're going to come together a lot stronger because of how it's made us feel and the realization of, wow, we are, we could be puppets. And does that make sense? Yes. I think also, um, you know, to take that a step further, I think that the appreciation that we have for our loved ones, you know, yeah. we take things for granted so easily in life. And, you know, I'm, I have like this new sense of mortality for myself and for mm -hmm. all the people around me. And, you know, so I look at my husband now with different eyes and I think, wow, you know, this could all be taken from me and from us. And yeah. Um, yes. yeah, I don't have the benefit of having both of my daughters with me. I think they, they have logged on at some point because I saw their names pop up. So <laughs> hi, Lexi and Kelsey. Um, but um, yeah, it's, I think it's definitely going to change the way I view my relationships and um the value that I place on them, which was already strong before, but I think it's going to be even stronger now. Mm, yeah. And like you said, it's about, you just recognize your own immortality. Um, and, you know, I'm hearing of a lot of people sort of second up from that. I know, I don't know them personally, but I know of them. And two weeks ago, within one day, I heard about 20 people that had passed. I'm like, wow, this is, this is yeah. real. And it's that, it's that thing when it gets closer, it's almost like, this is real. Not that I doubt it was real before, but there's just something about, you know, on Facebook, everywhere you go, you know, this person's past. I'm like, damn, this is real. And so it galvanizes you to 
let's make the most of these moments. And so I dance with my granddaughter a lot. We've got a um, really great groove going on. I'm going to show you guys one day. I um, love that. I've I, seen it actually. I've seen you dancing with her. You've seen them. It yeah, we, we've got a groove going on. Um, I can still get these old bones moving. And then um, we did face painting because I, I, I face paint anyway. I, I glitter. Sometimes I glitter my face and I go out. I was doing that even before this whole lockdown thing. And so it was a really nice couple of weeks ago when she did a unicorn on my face and it looked like a bumblebee, but it was still that that thing of expression to say yeah i you know just be man just be yes, just find exactly. you, find your thing because this yeah. may if this is it then i'm going out dressed in my stripes my stripy socks and she wants me to um she wants me to do my hair um she goes nana i want you to have rainbow hair so i'm gonna go <laughs> rainbow i'm gonna, keep, I'm gonna do, do the color that right now? it's blue right it's blue. I'm going to keep the blue because I love the blue, but then yeah. the rain, the bow bits, I'm going to do at the back. Um, and it's almost like, you know, whatever now, this is how I feel. This is what I want to do. And sort of, we're going to wind down shortly, but I was listening to Esther Hicks. She channels um, a, a being called Abraham. And she was talking about being in your flow and being in your vortex. And what does that mean? It means that, you know, if I want to call someone, it's okay. If I don't want to call someone, it's okay. If I want to wear you know, whatever I want to do and it feels right, just do it. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to, you watch me. I mean, you know, because it's, it's time. And, and depending on which sort of how we're looking at things, this is also time for us to actually, like you said, value what we've got and em embrace that. And then just go the whole hog, man. Yes. 100%. It's so funny because we kind of came full circle to the street photography thing you know, and, and the attraction that I have to people who are able to just, you know, be who they are and mm. not, you know, conform if that's not who they are. Yes. And, and yes, what you're absolutely. saying right now is that that's what you're doing. And I think you've yes. always done that, but I think you've maybe even taken it a step further. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, you see my stripy socks. I should have held them out, but I'll put them up on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but and, and, and winding down, though, Randy, thank you so much for your time. You know, it's always a pleasure talking to you. And I've learned so much about watching you and um, listening to you. And it was a real pleasure having you work on the Motown. Oh, um, my gosh. That was the highlight magazine. of my career. The highlight of my that career. That was amazing. So I don't know, you know if Suze or any of them are on it. Like, you guys, that was the highlight of my career. Yeah. And I, I saw that, you know, I just saw this, this love and this passion and, and, but you got more, it was more about more than photography for you. It was about, like you said, connection. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for being part of the magazine. Thank you so much for what you do. And I guess in winding down, Randy, you know, if there's anybody out there, especially at this moment in time, and they just want to get creative because there's so many courses online, there's so many free courses, there's so many things. What would you say to them? You know, don't, it's about, finding these moments and, and just saying, I just need to jump into the next space. What would you say to them? You know, I would say just do it. Um, you know, I've always been, I've, my, I've spent my life kind of being held back from doing the things that I want to do by fear. Sorry, Esther. <laughs> my battery's dying, so I keep on plugging it and then I'm plugging it so I'm not shaking. Um, so fear, fear of going after you what you want, um, that I've always had that difficulty where I have wanted something, but I was always mm. afraid, well, who am I to go after that? Like, you know, what if I fail? What if I'm not good enough? And I, when I finally took the plunge, um, I realized that I have to, mm. every single solitary day, just push through whatever fear, fear I have um, mm -hmm. and just live. We've got one life to live and it's Absolutely. so important to live that life. And I, I just, I feel so blessed to have found photography because it's brought so much happiness into my life. And um, yeah, just go for it. Pick up that camera, pick up that paintbrush, pick up that pen, whatever it is. Look at you, Esther, with your magazine. I mean, I think yeah, my whatever baby. you want to do, you set your mind to it, you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Randy, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and just, yeah, just keep doing you and just keep stepping into you because there's more for you to come and you're, you're touching lives and that's the main thing. Thank so you, Esther. And I want to say whoever is on there right now, check out Esther's magazine because she's got a lot of great content and listen to her interviews. Um, I have felt so blessed to have met you, Esther. So thank you so much.
you know, ditto. Oh, okay, then. But let's let's do our thing then. Come on. Okay. Sideways. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Maybe this <laughs> All right. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you for all those. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Take care.